Hello, I'm David Monteiro and I'm a tour guide. You can find more information in my website at davidmonteiro.me. Thank you for joining me here and I hope you'll have a pleasant time. What to do and where to go when visiting Sintra, Portugal? Facing the dilemma of having too many options when you only have one day to visit Sintra? Well, let me give you a hand. Sintra is internationally known for its profoundly romantic environment and by its palaces that seem to have to come up from a Walt Disney fairy tale. Actually, they tell authentic stories and they are also carries of our history until the present day. In order to better understand this episode, I suggest you learn more about Romanticism. Please check the links on the description below for some reading. Every time I go to Sintra, I have the fantasy of imagining elegant 19th century gentlemen strolling along the streets of Sintra, with their mistresses carrying small and long umbrellas. Yes. I really meant to say mistresses, considering the 19th century was quite common for elegant men to have a chalet and a mistress in Sintra. There are no considerations here of right or wrong, just history. Were the umbrellas meant to protect their holders from the hard sun or from some indiscreet looks? I'll leave you to answer. One thing's for sure. In the evening, for tea or for dinner, a discreet couple could receive at their chalet the gentleman's best friend and his adorable lover. This kind of love plot could be part of a book from Esat Queiroz, a Portuguese writer from the 19th century. Esat Queiroz wrote a famous novel called Os Maias, among many others, and most of the Portuguese from my generation had to learn about it during high school. Significant part of Esat Queiroz's book took place in Sintra. Also, Sintra's warm summer, together with the haze that often hangs on these surroundings, are elements that help to create this mystical and romantic environment. Walking in Sintra is effectively immersing yourself into the romantic atmosphere of the 19th century. The 19th century was so crucial to Sintra that I cannot imagine how this place could be like without the events that happened during that period. To better explain myself, I list some significant events that occurred during that time. 1808, the signing of the Convention of Sintra, which put terms to the first French invasion. 1808, Lord Byron stayed in Sintra. 1838, Ferdinand II acquired the convent of Nossa Senhora da Pena, actual the Pena Palace, and the Moorish Castle. 1858, there were major rebuilding works on Montserrat. 1887, Lisbon Sintra train was inaugurated. 1892, barons of Regaleira sold the Quinta, the farm, to Antonio Augusto Carvalho Monteiro. About this Quinta, means estate or farm, you will find more information in my website. In this very synthetic list, we can see relevant references to buildings, monuments, considered today as great monuments of Sintra. You can also relate these events with the romantic image we have today of this village. As an example, please notice when Lord Byron was in Sintra. Yes, Lord Byron, the author of a famous version of Don Juan and many other works that promoted Sintra as a romantic village. In 1992, the cultural landscape of Sintra was classified as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO, and this was also another crucial step to Sintra's worldwide promotion. Nowadays, Sintra is a must-visit place when considering travel to Portugal. Sintra is not far from Lisbon. It is less than one hour by train from Lisbon, taking the train at R Rocio train station, right in the center of Lisbon. The train is straightforward, fast and economical way to reach this village, as opposed to driving. If you don't know your ways in Sintra, driving there can turn to be really annoying. Sometimes it is difficult to park in Sintra, or even arrive to the historical center of the village, due to the dense traffic of tourist vehicles. 
When in Sintra, please go to the tourist office. The tourist office employees are incredibly friendly and very professional. They will show you many options for your day. The great difficulty will be what to select considering you have only half a day or one day. As you can see in my website, I usually present many walking possibilities. However, at this moment I will skip the walks in the woods to focus only on monuments. There are so many monuments to see and not having all the time in the world, what to select? I do not know what to answer, because it always depends on what each one of us loves to see. Anyway, I will try to summarize the most essential points for each place for those who have only between half a day to one day to spend here. The focus will be on the following monuments palaces. The National Palace of Pena or Pena Palace, the National Palace of Sintra, the Moorish Castle, the Quinta da Regaleira, and Sintra, the village itself. Please forgive me for leaving out of this list other spectacular monuments, but the selection had to be done. The time it takes to visit a monument will depend on your interest for details, the background history and many other elements. One photographer can easily take half an hour in a place where a relaxed walker will stay only a few seconds. However, there is a general idea of the time it takes visiting each site and is what I will refer to during this post. I'm not going to detail what we can see in the monuments because you can find plenty of useful information on the internet or in travel books. I'll give you a general idea of what you can expect when visiting each place and the time it will take to visit so you can better organize your time. The National Palace of Pena or Pena Palace We can divide this monument into two areas the palace and the park. The palace takes between an hour and a half to two hours to visit and the park can take between 45 minutes to one hour to visit. The palace. During the 16th century a monastery was built in honor of Saint Geronimo. With the 1755 earthquake that practically destroyed Lisbon, the monastery was severely affected as well. The few monks that were still living here, with the consequences of the earthquake, ended up leaving the monastery. During the first half of the 19th century, the monastery ruins were bought and turned into the monument you can see today by our king Fernando II. He was the regent king, married to Queen Maria II. He was born in Vienna, Austria. The palace is the vision of a foreigner, perfectly fitted to this country with both modern and classic concepts brought from Northern Europe. By this magnificent undertaking, he wanted to show the Portuguese he was here to stay and to be worthy of a queen coming from one of the oldest European blood lineages. The park. The park is lovely for a relaxed walk. You will see some lakes, high viewpoints that serve as a lookout for the beautiful woods and the rocky surroundings and you can also have impressive sea landscape views. At the park, you can find fascinating trees and plants, species you can't find in this area. Following what was fashionable during the 19th century for gardens and parks, Dom Fernando brought many exotic species not known in Portugal. Also, a considerable sized pond was constructed with swans and their peculiar houses. When walking in the park, there is a point not to be missed, is the giant, a statue from where you can have a fabulous view of the Pena Palace and all the surrounding area. The National Palace of Sintra It is one of the ex libras of Sintra, appearing in many brochures that is effortless to recognize by its two massive chimneys. It is located in the center of the most touristic part of the village and therefore, maybe because of that, is also known as Palacio da Vila, the village's palace. 
there is a significant reason to select visiting this monument. It is practical. Don't take me wrong, it is a spectacular place and has many other merits, like being an important historical building. However, practicality is also to be considered here, and its location can't be better if you don't have much time. The visit takes about one hour, one hour and a half. What I find most fascinating in this monument is that during the visit, we feel we are in a building that brought to the present days bits of every moment of its existence. Considering it exists since the 14th century, with significant renovations in the 15th century, we have the sensation of walking through history. Also important is the fact that it was a royal palace. It has beautiful areas and full of meaning as the ruins of the coat of arms. Despite the immense beauty of many of its rooms, the kitchen is a fantastic place and maybe one of the funniest sights because we can see inside the chimneys that mark the landscape of the village. The Moorish Castle As the name implies, it is a castle built during the Moorish occupation period. However, although with not very strong evidence, some people believe that before the Moorish period, this place would have initially been holding some Visigoth constructions. With a military objective, it is located in the highest area of outskirts of Sintra. From the castle, we can have many photo opportunities over Sintra and also to the Penna Palace, perhaps one of the most photographed spots from here. It is a medieval castle, so you can expect a Spartan environment. Occasionally, you can find temporary exhibitions in some rooms in the castle. A visit to the castle can take about one hour maximum. Quinta da Regaleira I must say, I love Quinta da Regaleira for a good number of reasons. In addition to being an extraordinary monument, Quinta da Regaleira also represents a dream made reality, a vision of someone who was neither king nor aristocrat, was the son of a merchant, a living proof that a personal fortune can be used to a long-lasting works. With a 10 minutes walk from the historic center of Sintra, you will arrive to this place and the visit takes between one hour and a half to two hours. At the end of the 19th century, Quinta da Regaleira was bought by Carvalho Monteiro from the barons of Regaleira. With the technical support of the Italian stage designer architect Luigi Manini, he built this unique palace. As a travel and monument guide myself, I always suggest that you take guided visits. For Quinta da Regaleira that suggestion is even stronger. I believe you will need a local guide to help you to understand the whys of this monument. For this monument, a guided visit will make a huge difference. Within the Quinta da Regaleira premises, there are many points of interest, such as the Regaleira Tower, the palace, the chapel of the Holy Trinity, the Initiatic Well, and the garden. It is, without any doubt, one of my favorite places in Sintra. Who knows, maybe I can guide you here. Sintra, the village. This village presents itself as the exponent of the Romanticism in Portugal. You can find Sintra quite busy, with lots of tourists wandering around. Still, you will not want to leave the area without at least a short walk in its narrow streets and taste the two most famous Sintra's pastries. To understand Sintra's environment, it is essential to read a bit about the 19th century in Portugal and, in particular, in Lisbon. When arriving at the center of the village, Coming from the train station, the first moment you will notice is the, the Sintra's National Palace with its two big chimneys. The center of the village is the square of the palace. Reserve about one hour to walk in the village. 
for your guidance and better time management, at the tourist office you can collect some urban walks leaflets. Whatever the route you will take, there are some points you should not miss. They are... Taste the traditional small cakes, queijadas de Sintra, Sintra's uh, cheesecakes, and the travesseiros, pillows. Traditionally, they are sold at Piriquita coffee shop. Other traditional cakes, but less known, fofos de belas, agualvas, and nozes douradas, you can also taste them. If you are going to have lunch or dinner here, then look for a restaurant where you can ask the local dishes. Leitão de Negrais, roasted lamb, Sintra's beef, or one of the many grilled fresh fish. Please be aware that the purpose of this episode is not to do an exhaustive description of the monuments or places you can visit. The objective is to give you some information to help you decide what to see and what to do during a short visit to Sintra. About every monument, you'll find a lot of literature in the internet and in my website. I hope you will enjoy your day. Hello again. Thank you for spending your time with me. I hope you enjoyed yourself and please do not hesitate to get in touch with me if you feel the need to. You can check my contact details at my website davidmonteiro.me The way you can help me is to share this post with your friends and family if you liked it. It is easy for you and extremely important for me. Keep yourself happy and safe and I hope for your next visit. Bye!